So how do you stay warm in a hammock? Let's check it out. So how do you stay warm in a hammock? I have a few tips here. Check it out. The first one is, well, first check out the weather conditions, right? So uh, you don't want to underpack for sure. Overpacking, I don't think there is such a thing in the winter time because <laughs> the unexpected happens, right? Um, you, can, you can get ridiculous. I have gotten ridiculous. Come on now. <laughs> but uh, the general rule is uh, be extra cautious. So the weather conditions, like uh, where you're at, the weather report might be, you know, pretty spot on. Here in the Rocky Mountains, not so much. You know, the weather can, the temperature can vary, you know, 10, 20 degrees, depending on what, uh, you know, if, if the weather tells you that it's gonna be 20 degrees out at night, it could be zero, you know. And there's wind chill to, uh, to calculate into this. So just be extra cautious, give the weatherman a little grace, and expand out those ends on his predictions a little bit so that you don't get caught in a bad situation. Now let's talk about the under insulation. I don't say under quilt because it can be more than a quilt. All right, so on my hammock, I'm gonna start from the bottom and work my way towards the hammock. What I brought with me on this trip, based on the weather, was uh, actually a few layers underneath. So the first one is this, is this windproof cover, quilt cover quilt protector. You can get them at a few um, hammock supply places, but this helps with the wind. Uh, it helps uh, keep the warmth in, uh, you know, kind of deflect or keep the wind from sucking out all of the heat from inside of here. So this is very handy. Let me just take this corner off so I can show you the rest. Then the next thing I have is my 10 degree under quilt. Now this is my primary insulation. And on most trips, this is probably enough. But I, I took a little extra caution on this trip and I put two layers in here. Let me take this corner off to show you the other layer. So that's, so that's my 10 degree. And here I have my, this is a 20 degree under quilt. Doesn't exactly fit this hammock, this bridge hammock, but it fit it close enough for me to use it as an extra layer. So I put that on here. And I think you've seen in my other video where I, in this, in this double layer hammock, there's also another layer in here to where you could put a mattress, an insulated mattress, or some kind of reflector material, heat reflecting material, or maybe even a wool blanket or something like that. Uh, but there is another layer in here that allows you to put one more insulation layer in your system. The thing about hammocks is that a lot of your heat is lost underneath you, not necessarily on top of you. Underneath you is what you should be concerned about as much as the heat escaping from on top of you. So it's really important to put some decent layers on the bottom of you. Don't keep, I'll tell you, don't be afraid to get crazy. So people think I'm just too crazy. But uh, I like sleeping warm. If you are a cold sleeper like me, you know, take these kind of precautions. If you're a hot sleeper, you know, you might not need to do that. But just whatever you do, do you. For me, double inch layer is the way to go. Okay, so let's talk about inside the hammock, the stuff you put on top of you. So sleeping bags might be good for tent camping. I don't even use sleeping bags in tent camping. That is to say, a sleeping bag that wraps like all the way around me and I cuddle up. Um, I don't even use those, even in the winter time, uh, while I'm, when I'm out camping, even if I have my tent with me. So in my hammock, I have a quilt system. Let's, let's start with the primary layer. The primary layer is actually a 10 degree sleeping bag that I've unzipped 
and that he uses a quilt. It's important when you use a quilt that you make a foot box because for me, my feet get colder than probably anything else in my body. So what I like to do is zip this up and create a little box for my feet to fit in. That way it has its own little comfy little place where a lot of hot air can just hang out there and keep my feet warm. And then I just spread the rest of this out and use it as a quilt. Now you can get zero degree, you can get minus whatever degree that you want for your primary insulator. Another way to do this is to actually have two layers. You saw in a previous video of mine, when I went out tent camping in the winter time, I actually used a sleeping bag and a quilt on top of that. So you can do on top the same way that you did on the bottom. You put double quilt on the bottom, you can put a double quilt on the top if you want. I've also seen people bring along wool blankets. That works really nice too. Another thing that I brought with me this time was this sleeping bag liner. It's just a little bag that you fit in it. This is, um, this is rated at like 25 degrees. Um, I didn't wear this last night, but I had it right here in my little pocket, just in case David got a little chilly. I could slide into that thing, and there's another layer. Uh, let's see. The other thing I have in here is what I bring with me all the time. It's just my pillow. Uh, this is not an insulated pillow. Um, I don't usually feel that an insulated pillow is necessary, but uh, if your head gets extra cold and you want that little extra warmth there, I think that'd be fine too. Okay, so what about the clothes that you wear inside or underneath your quilt. There's another judgment thing, right? So if you are a warm sleeper, you're probably gonna strip up a couple layers and just get to your base layer and slide in and you're good. Uh, for me, that's not always the case because again, I'm a cold sleeper, right? So what I do is I, it's, it, this is a layering game, right? Just like you do in the winter, no matter where you're at. Let me just uh, show you what I have on here. I can see the whole thing or not. So this is, is a little neck gaiter. This is really good for keeping the heat that escapes underneath your collars on whatever shirts or jackets you're wearing. I wear this almost all the time in the winter time because it's just, it just keeps the heat in. It's just an amazing little thing. So let me just take this off. Doom, doom, doom. Okay. All right, so, so, so that's that, just a little gaiter, really nice. All right, so let me look at my layers here. See if I can take all my clothes off. Okay, so this is a merino wool long sleeve t-shirt. It's pretty lightweight. I only have it on as a base layer for wicking. And merino wool uh, does real well for wicking and it's also a really good warmth layer and it doesn't have to be super heavy. On top of that, I have, I have this little, it's a nylon blend. Uh, it also is a wicking. Uh, kind of clothing and it also has a hood on it. So it's a little hoodie That I can wrap over my head if I want to a little extra layer If I want to keep my head warm in addition to whatever else I'm wearing uh, Okay, so so that's that layer on top of that. I have this polyethylene um, insulation layer um, You can use fleece Which is really popular you can use wool which is super great uh, this is just what I have. Um, I think if I'm going to purchase another thing uh, for, uh, for an extra layer like this, I would probably get a nice, good quality wool. They're usually pretty expensive, but I tell you what, for keeping you warm, for keeping you dry, it just, wool is the way to go. So, uh, anyway, I have these polyethylene ones. And then on top I have this little Nano Puffy. Um, I don't always wear this. I, in fact, I don't always wear all of this. But if I want to put like a one, two, three, another, a fourth layer on, this is a nice little nano puffy. It's, it's made of synthetic material, th synthetic insulation. It's actually pretty warm. And there's a nice little insulation layer on top of all of this. Now, if it gets really crazy, if it gets really cold, I take out my Columbia Titanium. This thing has like heat reflector material on the inside. 
Uh, it's um, it's down for for along the core here, and then it's synthetic for everywhere else. So it's like um, a super super insulated. Now if I put this on, you can see that it's just a big old puffy, and it's really super warm. I can zip it up here. I'll start sweating if I uh, if I keep this on for too long because it's just that warm. Right, and then this thing goes like, all the way up, and then I got a hood. There's a string here somewhere to tighten it up, but you can see that this is like for extreme situations. But um, it's a lifesaver if ever it gets that cold. So I bring this along. And uh, those are the layers that I could wear on top. Now, uh, on, on, on the bottom of my pants, um, I have another polyethylene, polypropylene, poly... Uh, long underwear that I wear and I wear my pants on top of that if I'm cold enough I usually like to take my pants off because it just feels better and they just sleep in my long, long underwear um, Let me show you my socks Now If your feet get cold in the winter time and you jump in this thing I can tell you 99% chance they will never get warm unless you get them warm before you get inside. So walk around, sit by the fire, put your feet up by the fire, get them warm however you can. And then when you get ready to roll in, take off the socks you've been wearing all day because they are a little bit moist. There's a little bit of moisture in there and that will keep your feet cold. So take off whatever socks that you had on for the day and put on something else. Um, I have these super double insulated socks that I got in the military years ago. Um, there's it's insulated. There's another insulation layer that's from here down, and uh, and, it, and it's like a wool blend. And the the important thing is that you want to keep them kind of loose on your feet. If you have really tight socks on your feet, it'll restrict the circulation, and your feet will stay cold. So keep a nice loose sock loose sock on, and. Um, these go pretty high up, like halfway up my leg. <laughs> a little crazy. But uh, these are the ones that I wear. You can get some nice wool ones that are a little bit loose. That's super nice. And the other thing that I wear, if it gets super cold, are my little down, little down puffy socks. Uh, then I have a, I put an extra layer on the inside. It's a nice wool. There's like a little reflective layer and a nice wool layer um, for, for an insole. And uh, these are, I put these over my socks. And again, they're super airy. My feet look huge in, inside of this thing, but, but it's all the air around it. The air is what keeps you warm. The air is the insulator. So air is your friend. Yes. One more thing I forgot. In a hammock, if there's anything that's gonna get cold, almost every time is your head. So, some people have those little down, it's down, down hoods, uh, and I hear those are really nice. But with down, when you lay on one side, it squishes, it's useless. Um, some people swear by those, and that's fine. If they work for you, excellent. I have this little wool uh, balaclava that I wear. This thing's a little itchy, but I tell you what, my head never gets cold when I'm wearing this. Uh, and then if I want, I'll put my hood up over me and um, I'm ready to go. Um, all right, so that's what I wear inside this thing to stay warm. And I, and I can tell you that I am probably warmer in my hammock than I've ever been in a tent ever. So. If you like hammock camping, don't be afraid to get out there in the winter time and to just enjoy it. Get a couple more layers and hang happy. Now the thing I haven't talked about yet is your tarp. Your tarp will keep the wind out because um, you know the wind is going to probably be your worst enemy out here in the winter time. So when I set up last night, what you see behind me, I have this in Porsche mode just so I can demonstrate what's inside of here. 
but at night what I'm going to do is um, this is a, this is a three season one which means that the doors are only three quarter doors and here's a shot of what this looks like when I have it set up and you can see that it's not quite on the ground and you can see that there's still some space underneath here for the wind to blow through so what you want to do is you want to set this if, it, if it, especially if it's windy you want to set this tarp as low as possible to the ground what that'll do is it'll restrict the airflow coming through under you to take away all of your heat now surprisingly you don't have to have this thing all the way to the ground to stay warm the wind coming through here is pretty restricted even if you have it like you know six inches a foot from the ground for me it's normally been fine unless you have like a lot of strong wind so again the weather's important when you check that calculate in the wind situation the second option for a tarp is a what's often called a four season or a full door tarp this is an example of a four season tarp that has closed doors on the end and you can see how effective this might be with uh, with the wind so all of this is closed off very little space on the bottom you can even bring down bring this down even a little bit lower if you wanted to if your hammock fit in there now my bridge hammock doesn't fit in uh, this kind of tarp the size of tarp because the poles on the end are going to poke this and this is a dyneema fabric so it's going to uh it's not as puncture resistant as some other types of materials so i don't use this with my with my bridge hammock so I will do this kind of setup with my um, Dream Hammock Darien, which is a gathered end hammock. But you can see, if I back up just a little bit more, it is pretty low to the ground. Uh, it's very much boxed in, so you're not going to get a lot of wind in there, if any at all. And if there's some snow, what you can do is you can pile the snow up along the edges, and you can completely seal this off. So there are ways of making a hammock system really uh, into a tent, uh, you know, as closed in as a tent would be. So this is one example of a four season tarp that you could use hammock camping in the wintertime. <laughs> All right, so I'm David and this is the earth. So I'm David on earth. And if you like these kind of videos about backpacking and camping and exploring some gear choices in those kind of activities, you might want to subscribe to this channel because there is a lot more coming. And uh, yeah, go ahead and like this video. Uh, comment down below is really what I look forward to the most. It's talking with the people who have like interests and possibly could bring more, likely will bring more to the conversation. So. Um, yeah, if you have a special setup that you have in the winter time for your hammock and you want to share what you do, I think uh, everyone would appreciate that. I know I would. All right, so I'm going to go and enjoy this beautiful day and I'll see you on the trail.